Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to see you here. Uh, congratulations to everyone who is in person. Uh, you get a gold star for the day. Perfect attendance in 2024. Good job. Well done. Uh, <laughs> It's good to see you. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you this morning. Uh, as we kick off the new year, I know that means that we're thinking about maybe some changes that need to happen in our lives. We're thinking, hey, I'm going to start doing this. You know, we always have these things that we want to do. And uh, I'm excited to share some things that we're wanting to do this year with you. But uh, how many of you know it's important to get things started off right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's important to get it started off right. Maybe it's your, your day. Starting your day off, maybe it's with prayer. Maybe starting your day off, throwing on some worship music. Getting your day started off right. Have any of you had your day start when everything went wrong? I think we've all had one of those mornings before. Everything seems to go wrong. We know what those mornings are like, and it kind of affects the rest of the day. But what would happen if our day started off right? What would happen if our year started off right? I think it's good. It's good to encourage one another. Turn to the person next to you and say, you look good today. Okay? Some of you may not have told the truth. That's okay. <laughs> hey, you look good today. It's good. We all need to be encouraged, don't we? I don't know about you. I need to be encouraged. We all uh, have things that we are, are thinking about in our lives. As we, as we go into this year, you know, I know a lot of us are thinking about some of, maybe some of us are thinking about some of the things that might look different in 2024 than they did in 2023. I know I've set some personal, uh, personal goals myself, uh, things that I want to do, uh, but, but it starts with the decisions that we make. And not every decision that we make is an easy decision, is it? So if you, uh, I want to show you a picture this morning. You can look at the, the screen. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but on the left-hand side, top left, it says hard decisions. These are the hard decisions of life that we have to make that, that end up leading to an easier life. Life isn't completely easy and, and perfect, but, but it leads to an easier life. Then there's the easy decisions that we make that end up in a hard life. And we're, we're trying to, to climb an uphill battle. Has, has life ever felt like that before? I know there are times when we feel like that, but I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about hard decisions and easy decisions. The hard decisions, you can put that back up for a minute. The hard decisions are, some of us are making choices. I know uh, for, for me, um, there's a few things, uh, a few, so don't get your hopes up here. Um, a couple changes that I'm uh, around diet and exercise that some of us make around this time of year. Those are hard decisions. Now, some of you in here, you maybe you changed your eating habits years ago and you're just doing awesome and that's great and I'm happy for you. But for the rest of us, it's, it's hard and there's diet and there's exercise and things that we need to continue to learn and grow in and cut out those things. But what's the easy thing to do? Is it to eat healthy or to go to McDonald's and get a meal really quick on the go? We know what's easy and we know what's hard. It's those, it's those exercise decisions. I don't enjoy exercising. Some of you freaks here, you enjoy exercising. I know at least one person does, but I don't know what's wrong with people like that. That's not me. I don't, that, that's just not how I, how I operate. But I'm trying to, uh, trying to do some, some different uh, rhythms this year when it comes to, to exercise. But this is an area, it could be physically, it could be uh, spiritually. There are spiritually difficult decisions we need to make. It's the difficult decision of getting up early and reading your Bible or getting up early and praying. Um, I can tell you with the 21 days of prayer, I'm not usually up by 6 a.m. Some of you are. I'm not usually up at 6 a.m. I'm going to get up early because I got to be here at 5.30, get the heat cr cranked up so we can be nice and warm when we pray. But guess what? That's a hard decision. That, those are the hard things that we have to do. The disciplines of life can be difficult, but they help us to make they help us in the future of our lives, the, the hard decisions we make that will, will help us in the future. I wrote it, I wrote it down this way in, in our notes. Um, hard decisions now, easy life later. Easy decisions now, hard life later. Okay, some of the decisions, okay? If you're gonna smoke, you're probably going to have some health problems later on in life. If you're gonna drink in excess and you're gonna have some challenges in the future, if we don't eat right and we're constantly eating in, in the wrong ways, we're gonna have a hard life later. We, I think we understand this, but it's hard. And it's hard to make the choices and decisions that we need to make to, to change. 
but I'm excited because there are some things that we can do. Some, some of us just need to make small changes. It's a small little thing. I'm going to get up 15 minutes earlier. You, you, you've, you've heard the challenge we've made of, of, of reading your Bible every day, 12 minutes a day. That, that's not a real long time. 12 minutes out of your day is not a real long time. It's sometimes the small decisions that can make a big difference. But but sometimes there are things in our lives that really genuinely just need to change. And I wanna talk about that for just a few moments. Maybe there's a, a hard thing in your life right now you're experiencing. There's something difficult that you're, you're walking through right now. There's a quote I heard a few years ago and I wanna put it up on the screen. It it's just helps me to think right. It's, it's this, thought, this thought, what one thing, if it got better, could, would make the biggest difference in my life? What one thing could you change today or starting this year, what one thing could you change? Because every year and, and really any day gives us a fresh opportunity to do it. It's just that the new year really is kind of one of those times where we normally kind of think about these things. But what one thing, what's one thing that you could change this year? Maybe it's a financial thing. Maybe it's a, a health thing. Maybe it's a, a, a spiritual thing that you need to change that's gonna have a, a great effect on your life. Now, if you have a Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 22. This morning, I'm looking at this morning as an alignment morning, as a calibration morning, that there's some things in our life that we need to see correctly. And if we see those things correctly, it will have a ripple effect on our lives, getting ourselves aligned with where God is going and what he's doing. And Matthew 22 is a reminder of the importance of what is important to Jesus. This is repeated in a couple other gospels. And so if something's repeated in other gospels, that probably means it's important. It doesn't probably, it means it is important, okay? Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is, is getting questioned by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, these religious leaders. He had just had the Sadducees ask him a question about the resurrection and he, he helps them to understand because they didn't really believe or understand that. And so in Matthew chapter 22, we see Jesus, uh, he, he has some people come to him with a question and he's gonna answer that for them. Here's what it says in verse 34, Matthew tw uh, 22. Verse 34, it says, hearing that Jesus silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, or someone who, you know, wasn't like uh, someone that had just gone to seminary. This is someone who's got his doctorate. This is someone who's an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Verse 18, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. J Jesus knows how much we love ourselves, <laughs> how much we serve ourselves. He, he knows that. He says, love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That seems pretty simple, doesn't it? To even, even get a little closer, love God and love people. Those, those are the two greatest commandments that Jesus gives us and, and he gives to, to, to you, to, to me, to everyone who is present there. And, and, and here's what he's, he's saying. If, if you go back in the Old Testament, you'll, you'll see there are 613 laws in the Old Testament, okay? Out of those 613 laws, 365 of those laws are considered negative laws. Those are laws that we need to abstain from. In other words, they're the do not do laws. Don't do this, don't go there, don't do this thing, okay? Then there's 248, what are called positive laws. Those are the, these are the things you're supposed to do or to perform. This is the spotted lamb. You have to use a spotted lamb. They're, they're the ones that you have to, to do, okay? That's in the Old Testament. But during this time, this is the, the New Testament, they're, they're teaching, and, and the way that they thought about these things was there were heavy laws and light laws. And heavy laws were the important laws. Those were the ones that you, you were supposed to make sure that you did. And then there was the light laws, and those were the not so important things, okay? And so that's the framework and the thinking that these people had was these are the most important things, and these are the not so important things. Can I suggest to all of us today, this is exactly how you and I see our sin. 
we view our sin, <laughs> we view the sin of others as heavy, the heavy laws, and we view our sin as the light sin. Okay, we tend to look at other people's sins and say, wow, they're really, uh, they're really messed up. They've really got problems. But we don't look at our sin and realize we have big problems. We need to change. We need to make amends. It's the same, the same thing in the same way they thought is the same way we can sometimes think. And so Jesus is teaching them something very, very valuable here. And he's teaching them, yes, loving God is important, but especially this group of Pharisees, they had the law right, but they had a real difficult time when it came to loving their neighbor. And Jesus is helping them to understand that love for God cannot be divorced from love for our neighbor. In other words, he's saying, you cannot say, I love God, but I don't like people. I don't love people, or I, I don't wanna love that person. You cannot say that. If we love God, <laughs> we have to love others. We have to love people. I've heard ministers say this before, and it always makes me kind of cringe. They'll say, I love the ministry if it wasn't for the people. I love pastoring if it wasn't for the people. And I, I get it, you know, I, I'm a pastor. I get, you know, that sometimes people can be difficult and I, I, I get that and criticize and complain and all those things. But we get to do life with people of so many various different backgrounds. And yes, there will be times where you may not enjoy them as much as you should, but we should still love every single person because God does. We're heading into 2024 and we all know what happens later on in this year. If you haven't, you've probably gotten 75 mailers in the last two days. There's a primary, there's an election that's going to be coming. There's gonna be divisiveness that's going to rise up. It happens on the regular during these times. We saw it this week. You know, I hope that you've been taking some time to, to pray for the people. I, I, there's a pastor that I know that lives in, in Perry and uh, Perry, Iowa, where that shooting was. And we ought to be praying for those people. We need to be praying for the, the community and the teachers and the staff and all the people. There's gonna be so much trauma from what, is, what has happened. And what happens immediately after a shooting? <laughs> Arguing online about this needs to change or this needs to change and these are my rights and this is, and we get into these huge fights over things. And what gets lost in those arguments so often is love for one another. Wherever you stand on whatever issue that we face in this life, the question is, do you love people? And do you love people who think differently than you and vote differently than you? And you should, because the Bible commands us to do so. And so Jesus is explaining to them, he's explaining to them, you, if you're gonna love God, it cannot be divorced from the idea that you have to love people. You gotta do both of them. So he's calibrating us back to the two, two of the most important things we do. I don't naturally love everybody because I think differently than a lot of people. I need God's help to do so. And so it reminds me of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter one. Paul says this, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. What is he saying? He's saying, hey, I'm trying to follow the Lord. I'm trying to follow Christ. And as I am trying to follow him, you can follow me. I'm putting into practice the things of the Lord and follow me on the way. It doesn't mean that Paul thought he was perfect. It simply meant I'm following the Lord. I'm heading in the direction to the Lord and I want you to come with me. I, I want you, I wanna be someone that, that sets an example for people. Follow my example, how I treat people, how I interact with people, how I love people, how I love God. As I, as I thought about that, I, I thought of this question to this week. How close to God would the people around you be if they were to follow your example? Follow my example as I follow Christ. How close to God would people around you be if they were to follow your example? Okay. One of the easy contexts is our family. You know, we have three kids and our hope is that we, we serve it as, as an example for our kids to know God and love God. We could have our kids come up and spend probably three hours each of all the ways we've messed up that <laughs> in our lives. 
But is that something we try to do? Is that something we, we try to endeavor for and we try to teach our kids and model to our kids and, and, and help them understand we're certainly like Paul, we're not perfect, but you can follow our example because we're trying to follow the Lord. And I think in order for us to do these things, there are a couple things we're gonna do to start the year. And um, I'm excited about these things. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about these things. And there's, there's some things that we're doing that are a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I think it's good. It's good for you and me to get out of our comfort zone, isn't it? It's good for us to exercise our faith from time to time. We, we, we so easily fall into habits and rhythms of life. And, and I think there are times where God just needs to shake us up a little bit. And this is, there's a time where, this is a time where we're gonna be shaking a little bit up as a church. So a couple things that we're gonna do. If we're gonna love God and love people, there are two things. And this is why we're starting out the way we're starting out this year. The first thing we're gonna do, and we've encouraged you to do, is the, is the 2024 Bible reading challenge. We want everyone here to read your whole Bible in the year 2024. Now, some of you might already do that. You might already have a plan on the Bible app. You might have your Bible out. You might have something where you're constantly reading through the Bible. I wanna encourage you to read through the whole Bible this year. Uh, if you were out at the, the foyer, you probably saw we have some reading plans for you. And the thing I love about our reading plan, it isn't just Genesis to Revelation. It isn't just the New Testament. It isn't chronological. It really puts us in seven different places in scripture every single day of the week, and then just puts that on repeat for the 52 weeks. And so some days you may be, this morning, we were in the epistles, Romans three and four. There's the history, there's the law, gospels, prophecy, Psalms, there's, it just kind of puts us in different places. So I wanna encourage you, if you've never done that before, grab a sheet out there and start reading your Bible every single day. Do you know that God changes us when we spend time with him? When we spend time with, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible unless you're just reading it to read words on a page, to read the word of God, trying to learn, trying to know God and for him not to speak to you about your life. It's impossible because it tells us who God is. And when we see who God is and we see who we are, we see how unholy we are and how holy he is and how he helps bridge the gap to make us holy by his son, Jesus Christ. His word teaches us. And so we're asking you, would you take time to intentionally invest 12 minutes a day to read your Bible? Some of us scroll on Facebook for 12 minutes an hour. Maybe it's, maybe you're saying, you know what, pastor, you're not, you're not getting in on my scrolling. I gotta scroll. Okay, fine. Then I'm gonna ask you to do something else. Get up 12 minutes earlier. Set your life 12 minutes earlier. But when you start to spend time with the Lord, my suspicion is your scrolling is gonna be minimized a little bit. But when we get in the word of God, it changes us. And then what we're gonna do at the end of the year, uh, those that have chosen to go through it, I'm, I can't make anybody do it. Uh, this is an honor system. Everyone who's read through their whole Bible in 2024, we're gonna go to a restaurant, we're gonna rent a room out and we're gonna eat dinner together and we're gonna talk about what we learned that year. We're gonna go give testimonies of what God did and what he taught us because we believe one of the core values of this church is to know God. And if you want to get to know God, you have to get in this thing. You just have to. It's a non-negotiable, okay? This is a paper copy. Digital copy is fine too. I think you know that. Anyway. Let's get in the word of God. That's one of the ways that I believe we stay on track to love people and to love God. The second thing is this, Pastor Tyler mentioned it earlier, is 21 days of prayer. When you came in this morning, you got the little sheet on your, your uh, chair. I wanna turn your attention to that for a second. This Wednesday morning, we're gonna start our 21 days of prayer. It'll go through the end of the month, through the 31st. And so this week, there are seven different prayer points. And so you can pray one of those things every day and take your time and spend time with the Lord praying over that one thing. Or you can pray over all seven things in one day, okay? The point is you're spending time in prayer with the Lord. We're gonna take 21 days. I'm encouraging you to make sure that you pray. Set an alarm on your phone. Find a way to do it to make sure that you're spending time with God in prayer. And we're doing this very intentionally. Do you, I hope that you guys believe this, but when we as a church gather around and we pray for very specific things, we believe God does very specific things. And so we're praying 
over these things starting this Wednesday. If you want to start today, I think God will, God will let it happen, okay? You can, you can get away with it. But, but let's start this, this prayer on, on, on Wednesday morning. We're going to meet here at 6 o'clock. You can feel free to join us. I'd love for you to be here for, for that. I know many of you work. You're getting kids ready. All that is going on. But if you're able to, we would love to have you join us for prayer this Wednesday at 6 a.m. This week, you can see, if you look at the, the sheet, it's more focused on our lives and our family and those sorts of things. We're really trying to make sure we're calibrated with the Lord as we start the year off. Next week, the theme will be our church. And the week after that's gonna be our world and our nation and the world, just kind of the world around us. So uh, we'll have these for you the next few weeks, but put this on your mirror in the bathroom as you're getting ready. Put it uh, in your Bible, put it somewhere in your house, on your refrigerator, and, and take some time each day to pray over those things. But we believe if we're people of the word, if we're people of prayer, if we're a person of prayer in 2024, it'll help us stay close to the heart of God, to love God and to love people. Those are two things that we believe are extremely important if we're going to to do this. There's also, uh, it isn't ours, but it's another church has, has an app called Pray First. If you go to the App Store, Google Play, and search up Pray First, there's an app that has different prayer guides and different things you can search up. But I wanna encourage you, Let's be people of the word and be people of prayer in 2024. That's what's gonna keep us close to the Lord. And then that kind of leads into where are we going? Uh, most of you know me. I'm kind of a, uh, I, I kind of feel like a, a pastoral, pastoral leadership is, is more my gift than visionary leadership. And so for me, as I kind of think through numbers and, and things and goals that we want to do, sometimes that can be a challenge, just being honest for me. Um, but I think it's, it's really important for our church to know where we're going. And so there are a few things that we're going to be striving for this year. And it can't just be me, Tyler, and Jason, and Tony. <laughs> it has to be all of us working together to see these things happen. We've set some goals, and these are some goals that they're, they're um, things that are very specific. There are things that we want to be measurable, things that we can attain as a church. We do believe they're attainable. We believe they're relevant to our church and, and who we are as a church, and we're going to put a little bit of a timetable on them because we don't just want to say, hey, here's what we'd like to do someday. This is what we want to do this year in 2024, okay? So here, go with us as we dream a little bit about what we, we want to see. Here are some of the, the things we want to see. The very first is we want to see a 10% increase in missions giving. Uh, this church does very well for the size of our church. We give away, I just want, like, we give away almost a sixth of our income to missions. There are a lot of churches that um, aren't able to give that much. And, and I'm not saying that to, to brag. I'm not saying that to, 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 I'm just saying we give a sixth of our budget, or sorry, <laughs> Excuse me. 60, excuse me. It's, I'm sorry, I'm kind of having a brain, brain fog right now. We're, we're, we give, we're giving away one sixth, excuse me, one sixth of our budget goes to missions. One sixth, not 6%, excuse me. One sixth of our budget. And as we show, the, show you those numbers at our annual meeting, you'll see it's a very significant amount of money. And what we're saying is we want to give more. Not just so that we can say we gave more, but we believe this. If everyone gives something, it keeps us closer to the heart of God. And so when we give to missions, we call it kingdom builders here. Even if everyone in the church who doesn't give to missions would give $5, this would easily be attainable. Just imagine if you and your family, maybe you don't give to missions on a monthly basis. Would you consider giving $5? $5. That's a Starbucks drink. Okay. That's like a half a meal at McDonald's. $5 a month to, to missions. That would help us to increase our missions up 10%. The next thing, this one, this one is kind of a, uh, a big one, is, is 150 in regular attendance. Once again, we're putting numbers. We believe numbers are important to the Lord. So we're putting some action behind this. We wanna see 150 people in regular attendance. That's gonna mean our church is gonna need to grow by about 40, 40 ish percent just this year. Do you believe we can do it? I believe we can do it. But here's what it's gonna take. It isn't gonna take just me, Jason, Tyler, and Tony. It's 
It's going to take all of us working together and inviting people to come to church. I'm appreciative. I know there are some of you in here that you do great. You invite people to church on a regular basis. But we want to, be, we want to, we want to create a church that you love so much that you want your people to come. You want your family to come. You want your neighbors. You want your coworkers. You want your friends and your classmates to come. We want to experience the presence of the Lord in, a, in, in such a way that people are drawn to it. If we're going to increase in number, we're going to need some more volunteers. It's about a 25% increase in volunteers. Now, we have, I talked to a lot of pastors, we have an incredible volunteer base here at the church. But even with an incredible volunteer base in the church, there are people here who haven't got connected with anything specific yet. And what we're going to ask you to do, if we're going to grow, we're going to need more people to step up on the team. We're going to need more people. We don't want the people who are on the team to have to do double duty. We want those who, who maybe haven't connected yet to maybe start something this year, whether it's, it's nursery or kids' church or greeting or cleaning or any of those things. But we're going to need to see if we're going to grow, we're going to need to increase our our volunteer base. All right. The next thing, once again, these are, <laughs> these are numbers that we want at least, we want to see at least 20 people give their lives to the Lord this year. At least 20 people. We want to see at least 10 people get baptized. We're going to be teaching about baptism in, in March. We want to encourage at least 10 people this year to make the decision to be baptized. We want to see five people baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but as the Holy Spirit was here this morning, the Holy Spirit has more for us. He is always wanting to draw us closer. In the, I, we want to see five people, at least five people filled with the Holy Spirit this year. One of the things we're going to work towards uh, also is uh, weekly communications. Just we want to get better at that. We know we got to get better at things. I know I got to get better as a pastor, whether it's communicating, whether it's sending out things. Uh, I got to get better at that. And one of those things that I'm holding myself to is weekly communications. If you didn't get an email yesterday morning, if you're not on our email list, fill out that connect card and, and let us get your email so that we can connect with you. We want to send out weekly communications. One's going to have the Bible verses that we're reading that week, but it's also, hey, here's what's coming up. We have our annual vision meeting coming up at the end of January. All those things that we send out. So, so please, if you're not connected over email, fill that form out and put it in the box before you leave so that you can be connected in those. Another thing we're going to do is what we're calling after church with a pastor. Every other month, we're going to meet for new people who are new to the church. Every couple months, we're going to gather. We're going to buy them lunch, and we're going to meet down in the fellowship hall, and we're going to eat together so that they can get to know me, and I can get to know them. Just a way for them to get connected and, and find a place here at our church. And our hope is, if we see these numbers now, these, as these numbers begin to change for us, is that when we get to Christmas Eve next year, we're going to have to have two services because we won't have enough room for the people that are here at the church. That's what we're believing the Lord for. And we're asking you to believe with us. Not so we can say we're these numbers. We believe people matter to God. One of the things we're going to work on is, is the next thing is our kids' ministry. Um, our kids, we have two fantastic leaders who absolutely love and adore your children. And what we're wanting to do is we've spent a lot of time over the last several years doing things in our church. We put siding on, did some parking lot things, did the youth building. We've done a lot of those things. One area where we haven't really strategically invested a lot has been in our kids ministry, and that's going to change in 2024. We want to spend some time investing into our kids' ministry. There's some upgrades that we need to do when it comes to the technology in the room. We're looking at some Bible-based curriculum. There's, some, there's curriculum out there that basically said that if you bring your kids to our, our kids' church from kindergarten through fifth grade, in those six years that they're in kids' church, they'll get all the way through the Bible. And there's nothing greater we can give you and your family than to take your kids through the Bible at that young age. So that's one of the things we want to do. BGMC giving, you know, we have our big yellow party, our art sale, we have all those things. This year, the project's going to be WorldServe. WorldServe's going to be one of those things where we, uh, WorldServe does um, water wells in places that doesn't have, uh, that they, they don't have water or, or uh, limited water resources, vehicles for missionaries, equipment for our missionaries. That's just helping our missionaries. And so our BGMC and our youth are partnering together once again this year to do so. Um, let me just say this, our youth and our kids this year, um, they, they together gave, um, we gave $18,000 to AG Foster Care Network last year, $18,000. 
to help foster care families. That was what our kids and our students rallied around a goal, and that's what they did. It's amazing what God can do when we, we get a plan together and we stick together on it. And, and the last part of that is a, a potential space upgrade. Their classroom's getting big enough now or they're getting enough kids in the classroom that we need to consider making room in our fellowship hall, maybe a partition wall or something so that they can have their own space in the fellowship hall. So it's not the whole fellowship hall and feels a little bit cold, but it's, it's a specific area of the fellowship hall designed specifically for our kids. So that's what's coming up with our, with our kids. Uh, Pastor Tony is gonna work with the worship team. There's a few things he's working on this year. One is developing our worship team and helping our worship and, and growing our worship team, developing their gifts and skills. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for our worship team. Every week when we come, people who can sing because I can't sing, okay? Some of you can't sing either, okay? <laughs> Tammy, I know, I know. You can sing, but you can't sing. You know what I'm saying? But develop those gifts and talents and, and, and our singers and our, our, our worship team and, and the, the musicians and, and not only that, but then and grow our team. We need more singers. We need more musicians. You know, you see Diane up here every week. I know Abby is able to substitute in uh, every so often she comes in. We have, you know, Jerry Lou's been stepping in on the drums. Ben's off at college. And, um, and but... I just love how we work together. Ben's been back over the last few weeks and so he stepped in and played, giving Jerry Lou a break. And that's how it works is we, we all work together. Pastor Tyler said it earlier and it's one of my favorite phrases. I wanna get this on my wall in my office someday. Heavy things get lighter when we lift together. We have a lot to do, but if we lift together, we can do it. He's working on getting our, our teen students involved. Pastor Tyler and Pastor Tony are gonna collaborate. How can we get our students involved in our worship team, whether it's on the stage, whether it's up in the media team, whether it's helping in some way on, on the worship team, but working together. We believe one of the greatest things we can do is see this talent and giftings in our students and help them to live it out. And that's one of the ways that we're hoping to do that this year working to develop a resource hub where our worship team can, can, can get together or they can look for resources. There are churches that have free resources out there. There are resources that are out there to help our worship team grow in their abilities or see things from different sides that maybe they haven't seen. And then lastly, just increase team interactions, giving our, giving our worship team a place to, to talk and interact and learn and grow together and, and bounce ideas off each other to share with one another. So those are some of the things I know Pastor Tony is going to be working on. And then, you know, Jason does our finances and connections. And two of the things that we want to see happen this year, we, right now we currently have three small groups. We want to see five small groups by the end of the year. We believe with the growth, we believe with just more people getting connected, we're going to see that happen. So that's five groups we want to see by the end of the year. And then we have our Pathways classes. Those are classes, if you're newer to FIRST, where you get to understand our heart. You get to see a little bit of our DNA when you come to our Pathways classes. It's essentially these four ideas that we have. Know God, find community, discover purpose, and make a difference. Those are our core values here at the church. And those Pathway classes are gonna accomplish that. Two of those on the weekends where it's gonna be a nine o'clock to, to noon. Okay, we'll feed you breakfast when you come and then we'll feed people before they, look, before they go. Those are some ways that we're, and then other ways that we're just gonna be getting people connected to our church throughout the year. I'm gonna take one brief moment. I'm gonna let Pastor Tyler come and share a few things. I know the youth, he has some, some things he's wanting to see happen in the youth this year. And I've asked him to come and share some of those things with you. He's just gonna come up briefly and share those this morning. Yeah, I mean, we've been, Grace and I have been here for you know a little over three years and I could spend probably the next hour or so just highlighting just everything we've seen so far in, in the youth group and what the Lord has done. Um, we've had, you know, students graduate. We have um, two students, um, one of them graduated from us, one of them graduated from Morningside, but have stepped in as, as, as leaders in our, our youth group. We've developed a leadership team for students to develop their leadership abilities and their leadership skills, and they're involved in, in um, what we do on a Wednesday night in, um, in giving announcements and running our computer at the back out in the youth building. And so we've, we've done a lot, um, and we've seen God move in incredible ways. Um, here in, in the youth group. And um, I just have a few, like I said, I don't wanna, um, Pastor Josh told me that I got five minutes, so I wanna honor, <laughs> yeah. I wanna honor that as much as I possibly can. Um, and so, 
we have, um, we've set a few goals that I just wanted to kind of just let you know, um, and, and hopefully then at the end, you know, any, in any capacity, I would love it. Um, our leaders would love it if you guys could, you know, partner with us this year in any of these different aspects. But our first one is we want to see 10 new students commit their lives to Jesus this year. Um, and we, we, we see that as life change. Um, we want to see um, lives of our, our, our students' friends change, and we want to see 10 new students give their lives to Jesus this year. Uh, we want to organize and execute two community, ch or community or church outreach events, and that would, be, um, that would hit some community engagement. Um, over the last you know, year or so, community engagement has really kind of been on my heart and thinking of how we can get the youth involved in, in, in getting out in the community and helping out here um, within the church as well. So we, wanna, we want two, two specific um, outreach events that are put on and run um, by um, myself, my leader team, and the, and the youth group. Uh, we want to hit and surpass our 2024 Speed to Light giving goal um, that is currently uh, to be determined. We will um, unveil that on Wednesday for our students to see. But um, we've hit our goal, our giving goal, every single year so far. Um, we've had, yeah, I mean, you can, you can praise, yeah. Gener generosity, we want to see increased generosity. Um, I think the year before we came in, um, you know, our students gave over a little, uh, a little bit over a thousand dollars, um, to, to speed the light in 2021. We saw that increase to a little over 3000 in 2022. We saw the increase to 7,500. And then this year with the, with the partnership of the church, um, the youth group gave a little over like $13,000 to speed the light. And so um, we love to see, yeah, we love to see the increased generosity in our, um, our youth group. But as the youth pastor, I would love to see um, our students hit our goal without any sort of outside help. I would love outside help to take us above and beyond our goal, but I would love it if our students and our giving um, on Wednesday nights and, and at conventions and, and camps and those, give, those um, th that giving surpasses our goal even before we have any sort of outside help. So our um, fourth goal is we want to average 25 students a night by the end of 2024. We want to have a consistent presence. We want to consistently see students coming back. We average about 8 to 20, 18 to 20 right now. Um, some weeks are significantly lower with things going on. Some weeks are significantly higher, but we are averaging, you know, 18 to 20, but we would love to start hitting 25 students um, by the end of 2024. Well, I would love it if we pack out our youth building every single night. We got 40 chairs out there. I would love it if we're packing that every single night and it gets to the point where we have the problem of we need a new space again uh, because we have so many students coming to youth group and that's what we want to see. Our fifth one is we want to plan, organize, and execute what we're calling, as of right now, the name will probably change, our first ever spiritual emphasis week. Um, this is part of spiritual growth. Um, it would be like a little, a little kind of campish week for our students. It would be in the evening, five to eight, where they come, play games, um, eat dinner, and then we have an extended worship service uh, Monday through Thursday. So we, we start dreaming. I've been, that's been a, um, that's a dream that the Lord planted in my heart over this past summer. Um, and, and we'll, I'll just let you know, we're going to need volunteers um, to help with that week. So um, just, just get that. If you're, if you're, um, if you want to volunteer, you want to help um, pour into the next generation, um, I will most certainly need your help when that comes. Uh, number six is we want to bring our largest groups to camp and convention to date. We believe in that camps and conventions have a generational impact on our students' lives. And so we want to see our largest groups um, go to camp and go to convention here in 2024. Um, because like I said, we believe that, that camps and conventions are such a unique event for students. And we've seen so many students give their life to Jesus at these events be... Um, uh, uh, set free from addictions and all these other things and and we've seen students baptized in the holy spirit at these events and and these camps and conventions uh, we don't take them for granted we don't take them lightly because we believe fully that they have generational impact on our students is that one one moment 
one encounter with Jesus at an altar at convention or camp can change the family line of their future family to come just because they said yes to Jesus. And that's the generational impact that we believe camps and conventions have. And so we wanna bring our largest group there uh, to those events. And finally, number seven, this one's just more practical, building improvement. We just wanna carpet the youth building out there. Um, we've been out there for over a year and it's, it's just you know the hardwood floor and um, you know, we haven't had any sort of incidents out there yet, but um, we just wanna get some carpet laid down to make it, um, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more safe, a little bit more cozy um, feeling out there for, for our youth students. Um, and so all of these, all of these goals that we have are contributing to um, this 2024 motto that um, I believe the Holy Spirit dropped in uh, my heart for the youth group this year. And it's, it's, it's three words, it's deep and wide. That's what we're believing for our youth group this year. And for, for deep, we want continued deep spiritual growth and discipleship of our current students. Um, obviously, we never want to leave them behind. Um, so we want to disciple and we want uh, to continue to see deep spiritual growth for our students who are in the youth group. But we also want to cast our nets wide. We want to see new students coming. We want to see them being welcomed, involved, and having their lives changed by just one encounter with Jesus because one encounter can change everything with Jesus. I was reading this morning from Mark chapter 10 and there was a blind man who was begging for Jesus and he was calling out to Jesus, son of David, son of David. And, and Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, I wanna see. And Jesus healed. Jesus said, go, your faith has saved you. And, and he could see but what he didn't do is he didn't return to his life of begging. Instead, he immediately followed Jesus. And that's what we want is we want students coming into contact, having an encounter with Jesus and their lives being changed forever because of it. And so that's kind of just a little bit of an overview um, of what we're, we're dreaming for for the youth group in 2022. Um, I just want to say one last thing. If you um, want to partner with us in any way, shape, or form, whether it's financially, whether it's you know some places that we can go and, and, and help and, and be in the community, um, or you may be thinking, hey, I want to see what a Wednesday night is like, and maybe I want to get involved in, in changing the lives of teenagers by being a youth leader. We're always looking for, for great people who love the youth and love teenagers and want to see their lives changed. And so uh, my door is always open. Um, if, you have, if you want to partner with us in any way, shape, or form, please uh, come talk to me, and I'd love to have that conversation. Okay, I have just a couple more things and then we're, we're gonna um, uh, worship before we close today. Uh, lastly, when I, when I came here in 2012, um, we owed $450,000 on our mortgage and we were paying 8% interest. And in 2016, we were able to restructure our loan to go from uh, 8% down to 5.75%. Took a bunch of interest off, but we still were paying on that $450,000. And then three years ago, we, we, we had paid down to about $349,000 and we restructured our loan again to go from 5.75 down to 4.25. So we've significantly lowered our interest, but what we've done is this. Here's what our goal is. <laughs> In the last three years, we've paid $180,000 of our mortgage off. We have a regular payment, but we've been paying extra. And then even like last week or two weeks ago, we sent in an extra $15,000 principal payment because we had it to give. And so we believe that we want, we believe it's important for us to get out of debt as soon as possible. So over the next three years, we believe we can pay off the rest of that mortgage. And so as we consistently and faithfully give, I cannot wait. I told the board, I'm staying here at least until we get to burn this mortgage and then I'll leave. No, I'm not gonna leave, but. Well, we'll see what God wants, but I want to pay off this, this mortgage. Second thing is another thing, another goal we'd like to have, about $80,000 is new carpet in the sanctuary, out in the foyer and stairs, and down the hole downstairs is about $75,000, $80,000. That's a big project. That's a lot of money, but that's something we would like to start working toward that's part of the, the extended vision. These are extended vision pieces of things we'd like to see. Kitchen updates. We're going to start to do some kitchen updates this year, stoves, uh, fridge, and some countertops, some of those things that we're going to start to do this year, and we're going to have to budget for. Um, one of 
our sanctuary needs updated electrical and lighting. Um, that's just one of the goals that we have once we, once we get past some of the mortgage stuff and we get working towards some of these things. Um, we need some upgrades in electrical and lighting. Some of this stuff is just, this, is, this carpet is from the original on the building. My guess is there's not a single person in this room who has carpet in their house from 1986, okay? And so we wanna upgrade and do some of these things. We'd like to paint the sanctuary. We'd like to do some of those things here at the church. God, we wanna be a good steward of our building. And, and, if, and one of the goals we have is we can get this paid mortgage paid off as soon as possible. We'll, we'll work towards doing some of those things that we'd like to do. But I said it earlier and I'll say it again. We cannot do it alone. We cannot do it with just me or the pastoral staff. We all got to do it together. We're just wanting to lay out, here's some things we want to see. This is the direction we feel like God is leading us to do. And so we have to be calibrated in our minds to loving God and loving people. We have to be calibrated to being people of the word and people of prayer. And if we do that, I do believe God's going to see, we're going to see some significant increase in our church. And I'm excited about what the Lord's going to do in 2024. And I hope that you are too. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please come and talk to me about what Tyler or what we're talking about with kids. If you have any questions, please come and see us. We're doing this because we want to see men and women know Jesus. This is about the loss. We want men and women and children who are far away from God to be found in Jesus Christ. And that's why we're doing this. I'm gonna ask the worship team to come forward. We're gonna end by singing a song. This is a song uh, called You Are Good. And uh, one of the most important factors and you understanding who God is, is knowing that regardless of what happens around the world, God is good. And so we're gonna take some time and we're gonna sing this song together just to kind of close, just recounting and thinking about the faithfulness and the goodness of God. And so I want you to stand with me. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna, we'll sing the song and then we'll close after the song's over. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity just to share some of these, these goals that we have for this year, some of the things we would like to see, some of these things we feel like you're leading us in the direction to go toward. Lord, I know it was a lot of numbers, but even when we look at your word, there's a lot of numbers. <laughs> the feeding of the 5,000. We see all the, the 12 tribes of Judah. We see numbers all over the Bible. And so, Lord, we want to have... Uh, 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 specific things in place, specific things where we feel like you're wanting us to go as a church. And so Lord, lead us. We wanna, we wanna be led by you. Just like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. God, lead us to where you're taking us. But Lord, help us, whether it's inviting a friend, a coworker, whether it's being a part of the 21 days of prayer, whether it's being someone who's gonna be a part of the 2024 Bible reading challenge and in the word every single day, wherever it may be, helping on the worship team this year, whatever it is, God, we wanna do it because we want men and women and children who are far away from God to experience the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And so Lord, help us as a church to understand not just your goodness for us, but your goodness for humankind and the world. You died for everyone so that everyone who believes in Jesus could have a path to God. And so God, we, help, we hope, our hope and our prayer as that people would get on that path to Jesus this year in a new and in a fresh way. We love you. We thank you for what you're gonna do. Thank you for your goodness. We love you, Lord.